song, Holy God, we praise thy name. Joshua 
one of the fixed attempts. So he found some workers to do the work. Uh, Rick, uh, was it in bad shape in the temple? It was in bad shape, Abby. When everyone was done, Joshua sent a helper to pay the workers. So there's the helper paying the workers. The helper learned about a scroll that had been found in the temple. Oh, uh, Rick, uh, uh, the workers found a scroll. What is a scroll? Well, a scroll is like a book. But back in those days, it was kind of like a paper towel. They read about the they had to them. You ever seen a scroll? Here's a picture. The scroll was God's word. Joshua felt sad when he heard God's word because he knew that the people had not been obeying God. Oh, Ricky Calvin, what did he do next? Well, so King Joshua called all the people together to listen to God's word from the scroll. Then Joshua and the people promised to love and obey God the end. Oh, Rick, you know what? Uh, we should read and obey God's part two. Yes, we should. That's right. We should do that, Abby. Okay, now let's say a little prayer about that. We're going to pray about God's word. Okay. All right. Everyone repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God, thank you for your words. Thank you for your words. In the Bible. In the Bible. That we can listen to. That we can listen to. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
may be seated. Okay. And now we are at our prayers and praises. Uh, I'll mention a couple here. Uh, Jackson is got was able to write from the Navy. Uh, they have to kind of not communicate with family for a while, but he's doing great. So thanks for praises for Jackson. Uh, prayers for Pastor and his family. I guess they're traveling to Texas to see his mother. Um, and uh, we got some in the bulletin here, uh, some new ones. Uh, prayers for the family of Sherry Worling at the death of her aunt Wanda. And for Martin Zeezer. And his family for the death of Martin's sister, Josia. So prayers to you guys. Okay, and um, I got one other one here for myself. Uh, Want to praise God for the uh, a good haying season. We uh, we did hay this week, and uh, it's been perfect conditions. We get a dry spell where we can bail and, and uh, had a lot of helpers there. I don't want to say Paul who stopped by and helped me with that. That's a lot of work. Um, and also I have a longtime customer, Deb, Deb Curran, and she put her uh, horse down this week. And, and it's kind of been kind of tough for her. So. Uh, does anybody else have some additional praises or things to lift up, Tony? That and prayer for that couple over there in Copenhagen. And ordeal that come on over there. Yeah, what was that, Tony? I guess I'm not aware of that. There was a shooting at the Makokota Caves and a family um, was a victim of the shooter, so three passed away. Oh. And I have a son who's orphaned. Very good. Let's lift them up in our prayers. Anything else? Susie? Bob Crane passed away. Bob Crane. Very good prayers for Bob Crane and his family. and 
have children of whoredom. For the land commits great whoredom by forsaking the Lord. So he went and took Gomer, daughter of Diblim, and she conceived and bore him a son. The Lord said to him, Name him Jezreel, for in a little while he will punish the house of Judah for the blood of Jezreel, and will put an end to the kingdom of the house of Israel. On that day, I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. She conceived again and bore, bore a daughter. Then the Lord said to him, Name her Lo Ra Amma, for I will no longer have pity on the house of Israel or forgive them. But I will have pity on the house of Judah, and I will save them by the word, by the Lord their God. I will not save them by bow or by sword, or by war, or by horses, or by horsemen. When she had weaned Lo Rahama, and she conceived and bore a son, then the Lord said, Name him Lo Amai, for you are not my people, and I am not your God. Yet the number of people of Israel shall be like sand of the sea, which can neither measure nor number. And in the place where it was said to them, You are not my people, it shall be said to them, Children of the living God. Okay, please rise for the reading of our gospel. Okay, and our gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins. For we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you had a friend. And you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he, ans and he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though... He will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend. At least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So, I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who search, searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give them a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, and you will give them a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Okay, please join me in the response.
Good morning. Good morning. It was my freshman year of high school, and my good friends and I were sitting in study hall, being quiet, working hard. And the teacher got up and announced, all right, I'm leaving for a little bit. Everyone be good. So I watched her walk out, and as soon as she left, I said, all right, come on, kids, let's have some fun. And no one responded. And they thought, hey, come on, everyone, let's have some fun. And again, no one said anything, and that's when I looked over. And a substitute teacher had walked in and sat down on one of the students' desks and was staring directly at me. <laughs> No words were needed, and I knew I was in trouble later. So that is the first time I remember thinking we need to stay focused and do what is asked. So fellow members, even though Pastor Bonwin is on vacation, we must still be good Christians and do our work. The time we live in is an age of communication. There are modes of communication available that were unimaginable a century ago. With these modes of communication also comes an increase in attempts to communicate. I say attempts because some of them are unsuccessful. Do you have Facebook Messenger, Instagram, one or possibly several email accounts to check daily? I guarantee the spam emails far outweigh the ones that you need. Do you receive calls on your cell phone stating that your car's warranty is about to expire? Please press 1, if so. And I often think if you do press 1, they would not know what to do. The postal driver may bring you something worthwhile, but it will be far outnumbered by junk mail. The number of commercial messages on television per hour programming just keeps increasing. Drive down Collins Road, and see right that you know advertising to keep you company and or distracted. And then there are times that you are the one that wishes to communicate. You send an email and no response comes back. You leave a phone message and it gets forgotten or lost. Or the person you are trying to contact is in a meeting or away from the desk or on another line. You sit in a restaurant ready to order and start to wonder if the waiter or waitress has been kidnapped and it is up to you to go find them. We can add to this the ways in which human communication can turn out to be a losing proposition due to our focus at the time. Any one of these can have an encounter full of prejudice, disinterest, distraction, or other factors that prevent us from hearing us from responding in ways that the other party would appreciate. For all of these reasons, and still others, it looks sometimes as though human communication is a contradiction in terms. But wait, there is also something regrettable about all this that I must mention. Often we go a step further in very unrewarding direction. We assume that communication with God what we call prayer, has the same problems that we make so much human communication a disappointment or a dilemma. Perhaps we imagine God as a hiding manager who returns from lunch to his desk covered with pink slips titled, While You Were Out. One of them, he notices, has your name on it and the party you call back, but he only snorts to himself, crumples up the paper, and he throws it away. Today's scripture reading tells us stories in an effort to help us realize that communication with God is not like this. Or if it is, the responsibility rests not with God, but with us. Let's revisit that verse, verses again. Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up. I can't give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you bread because of friendship, yet because of shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. 
Remember that back then, nobody had email, a cell phone, TikTok, or even electricity. So when it got dark, most people went to bed because it was, indeed, very dark. Moreover, when people made bread, they made enough for that day. When Jesus mentions our daily bread in the prayer that he teaches us and to his disciples, he means daily, and they know what that means. So what happens when some random guest arrives, arrives at your doorstep late in the day, and you feel an obligation to practice hospitality, but the bread you bake that morning is all gone? Well, you might go over to your neighbor's house. This is a culture that practices solidarity, and your neighbor might feel as obliged to provide your guests with something to eat as you do. As they say, one for all, all for one. On the other hand, however, maybe the neighbor is already in bed. They have small kids. They finally fall asleep in bed. He doesn't want to get up, as it may awaken them, when you call, will they answer the door? Will it interrupt this year's watching of the Tour de France? Jesus tells us something. Jesus says he will. And maybe he gets up with agility and quickness, without waking one up or the dogs barking. He does this out of a sense of duty, or maybe also to get you to go away. Perhaps he sees that sometime the role could be reversed. He might even like to be helpful. In any case, the bread is put in your hands and is enough to feed your guests. You say thank you, and then return home through the darkness of the night. <coughs> Jesus offers a story to give us hope. If people will get out of bed in a situation like that, ordinary, tired people whose children may be light sleepers, there is hope. There is hope. Don't you think that the Holy One, blessed be his name, whose mercy endures forever, don't you think that this Lord may at least be approachable by those who pray? Do you think that those who pray who search out his house through the darkness, who knock on his door, indeed, don't you think that they will have the door open for them and have thrust into their hands something more than just a few crumbs? God is a lot better than we are, even at our best. God is God after all. Jesus realizes how anything this gracious is difficult for our small minds and tough hearts to accept. So he makes this point in different terms. He recognizes that most parents at least try to be good parents, even if they fail sometimes. When it comes to our kids, we don't act like jerks. Why should we suppose that when it comes to his kids, God would act like a jerk? The Lord of heaven and earth does not crumble and throw away while you are out such that mark your name. No, far from it. It might be easier if God did. Then we might regard ourselves as off the hook regarding prayer. We try to make it complicated. God keeps it simple. We want it our way. God has a better way. We may be fearful. God leads us to trust. We may be out to lunch. God is waiting by the phone. As one prayer puts it as, the Lord is always more ready to hear than we to pray. The Lord is ready to give us more than we either deserve or desire. The language of that prayer is not meant to keep God on good behavior. It's there for us to not believe God has either a distracted mind or a small heart. Jesus ends today's gospel with an attack on tunnel vision, something my boss Jim Lingo always used to refer to as looking through the world through toilet paper tubes. And he would say, Rich, how can you see the world when you're looking at it like this? Often what we ask God is too small. We ask for what might be part of our lives rather than life itself. Jesus promises 
and who are us to call him a liar? But the Heavenly Father will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. In other words, Jesus tells us to ask God for God, for the gift of God's own Spirit. What bigger gift can we ask for? What bigger gift can we be given? Ask for the Holy Spirit. Let the Holy Spirit prevail in your life. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek to be that kingdom of God. That place where God is apparent and God reigns. God bestows the Spirit for the asking. In the light of the Holy Spirit, everything starts to look different. More colorful. More colorful indeed. I've always enjoyed sharing a quote from Robert Fordham, especially when I was in youth ministry. Maybe we should develop a Crayola bomb as our next secret weapon. A happiness weapon. A beauty bomb. And every time the crisis developed, we would launch one. It would explode high in the air, but it would explode softly. And send thousands Millions of little parachutes into the air, floating down to the earth, boxes of Crayolas. And we wouldn't go cheap either. No, not little boxes of eights. Boxes of 64 with the sharpener built right in. <laughs> with silver and gold and copper, magenta and peach and lime, amber and umber and all the rest. And people would smile and give a funny look on their faces and cover the world with imagination. End of quote. It is astounding to realize that God gives himself away in response to our communication through prayer. It's astounding to realize that God then expects a like generosity from us. May our receiving and our giving be abundant. For what we receive and give, all of it is God and comes from God. Amen. Please rise for our closing.